It's time to set aside the superficial. It's time to go deeper. It's time to engage in truth. Here's John Bornchain. Well, everybody, welcome back to Engage in Truth. This is John Bornchain. I'm a senior pastor of Calvary Fellowship Fountain Valley Church right here in Colorado Springs. And it's so good to be back with you here today. I'm so grateful that you keep tuning in. We've had some uh, challenging shows, to say the least. In fact, last week we talked a little bit about hardships and what the Christian goes through in their walk with the Lord and in the difficult journey that they experience along the way and really trying to refute some of the messaging that's been out there that um, you're living your best life now. Uh, Really, this is a, a path that is wrought with difficulty. It is a narrow road. It's a challenging road. And it requires many uh, within the church even to come alongside one another, to encourage each other, and for us to stay in God's word and to keep a healthy prayer life as we go through this life together in our service to Almighty God. So today we continue in that vein of thought as we now shift gears In this topic of hardships, let's now look towards grief and how we handle grief. Yes, as Christians, we go through difficulty, and sometimes, I don't know about you, but last year, year and a half, there have been some very challenging moments where perhaps you've lost a loved one unexpectedly. I had a brother-in-law pass this year at 42 years of age, suddenly, not COVID-related, he wasn't even sick, just walked into the bathroom and died. And there was really no explanation for it. And we've had a number of other friends and family members pass away just suddenly as if a a light switch went off. And then, of course, there are a number of other ways that we grieve, and we'll talk about that here. But as Christians, how do we process through this? And it's okay to grieve. I think that's probably the best place to start here in this discussion because we have sometimes a guilty conscience about how we grieve. Some people, it's maybe through the loss of a child that's still in the womb and that mother for years later is still struggling with that loss and finding it difficult to even be able to talk about it, to have even others who are empathetic, sympathetic towards it, willing to listen and listen intently, not just nodding and and hoping to move the conversation in a different route, but individuals who truly are grieving with one another. So let's look at this biblically of how we grieve and and, and what we're to do with this very powerful emotion and, and perhaps even the struggle we may feel with depression afterwards. And you're thinking, wow, this is a great program. No, please listen carefully to what we have to share with you here today, because we want to cover some very serious issues in this, some sub points I believe that you will glean from as you learn how to experience adversity in a biblical way, how we overcome these difficulties in a way that honors God, rather than simply trying to refute that we go through them or pretend that we're not experiencing them. And And as a man, I struggle at times with compartmentalizing these emotions and not expressing them in a right way that can cause some sort of a a volcanic type of, of behavior at times where it seems like I'm even keel and then one thing goes awry and there's this eruption of emotion because I've been bottling it up and all of these different things for so long So I haven't expressed it in a healthy way. So uh, Dr. Steve Ford is here with me as always here in the studio, and uh, he has some wonderful thoughts to share with me and with you as well. So Dr. Ford, welcome back to Engage in Truth. Thank you, John. This is such a great compliment to our last show. It is. And as you were providing us with the intro, it made me think of the saying that for those of us who have accepted Christ as our Savior, that this life, even with all the, the perils and the things that we go through, will be the worst that we ever experience. And for those that have not accepted Christ for their Savior, this is the best it's ever going to be in all eternity. This is this is what they had to look for. This is going to be their high point. That's for right. us, this is going to be our low point. It only gets better from here <laughs> once right. we spend eternity with the Lord. So much to look forward. Uh, yeah, so much to look forward to, and I think you know that can help us persevere. And I had a psychologist friend of mine tell me as, as you were talking about the importance of grieving that even our tears, that the chemical content of our tears are different when we grieve than when we're injured and that sort of Mm. thing. So that grieving process is so important. And as you were saying, if you bottle it up, you have to do grief work. You can do it now or you can do it later, but you're going to do it. And and if you don't do it, it's going to come out in an outburst like that. 
uh, a pastor I was listening to one time said it's like we take these these experiences when we're young and we pack them in these little membranes and we tuck them down deep inside saying, I'm not going to let that hurt me. I'm not going to let that bother me. And then sometime, usually around our 40s, those membranes start to leak mm. and some of that stuff starts to come out. We're wondering, why are we depressed and why are we anxious and why are these things bothering us? But right. we we will process those things one way or another, sooner or later, and healthy or unhealthy. That's right. So it's important that we spend this time listening to what the Bible has to say about grief. And that's what we want to do. And here right. on Engage in Truth, we want to spend time just studying God's Word. How do we navigate this very real issue that often we dance around and we just don't address it with clarity. So we want to do that here for you today. Let, let me start off with just this little short poem. I, I have even used this at funerals because I think it's quite fitting. And, and, and believe me, when I have the opportunity to officiate a, a funeral, I always want to put our hope back on Jesus Christ. Amen. That in the midst of this graduation from one flesh into a new body with Jesus Christ forever and ever, uh, that there's a way we can grieve that's healthy in that. And, and here's a poem I thought was rather fitting. It says, God hath not promised skies always blue or flower strewn pathways all our lives through. God hath not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, or peace without pain. But God hath promised strength for the day, rest for the labor, light for the way, grace for the trials, help from above, unfailing sympathy, and undying love. It's very true. It's an unknown author, but a powerful poem nonetheless. In Scripture, we read in 1 Thessalonians 4.13, Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. You see, that that can cause us to fall into a, a, a void that is not easily filled when you have no truth to fill that void with. And we turn to all the substances of the world to try to fill that void, and it it is rather fleeting, and it never seems to heal those wounds, which are only compounded later on. So grief is an emotion that's common to the human experience. Let's just take that for what it is. I mean, this is a reality for all of us. And it's something that we actually witness quite a bit throughout Scripture. In fact, there's many of the individuals of the Bible, the ones we call our patriarchs and matriarchs of the faith, they also experience great times of sorrow and grief. And so I know that it's true, Dr. Ford, that everyone grieves a little differently. That's right. And they grieve over different things. Right. Differently. We're talking yep. a little bit about that before the program today. Yep. So exactly share with us right. just a little bit about that, it, uh, how we grieve. It's not just over the loss of a loved one. Definitely not. As we've all experienced, and even as you were saying with COVID, the loss of a job, the loss of friendship, mm. uh, the loss of a, a certain way of life, the way things used to be, right? and all those things, the, the death of a pet can be devastating. There are various types of loss and we, we all go through grieving differently. We all, there are some commonalities, but we all grieve differently and we need to respect the differences of others. Sometimes we may look at somebody and they're grieving in a certain way and we just need to respect that that's the way that they process things mm -hmm. and that's the way that they handle things because we really, every grief journey is different. That's right. It's different for each and every one of us. When you were talking, it reminded me of just my dad's voice rang into my ears from when I was a young man and him telling me life is not an endless run through golden days, uh -huh. you know, and I was, of course, at the time I think, well, maybe it wasn't for you, but you know, it's going <laughs> it's, it's to be different right? for me, you know, <laughs> uh, but uh, sad to say that didn't, didn't wind up necessarily to be so, but what I found was a Lord that was true and faithful and always present. Amen. And as you mentioned, there are some great scriptures one of the the ones that is really dear to me is Psalm thirty four eighteen. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saved the crushed in spirit. Mm -hmm. And just to realize that the the Lord always is there for us. And I love, love, really hang my head on Revelation twenty one four, when He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. Amen. So just as we were. We were talking about these are, as Paul said, light and momentary troubles. We do need to take time to grieve. We do need to cling to the Lord and realize that he's there to carry us through these things. But we should not be ex ex or surprised, I should say, when we have emotional manifestations of the, the grief. There are things that we have to process, things that we have to uh, deal with. We've known for a long time that there are five stages of grieving, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. Not everybody goes through all five. 
Not everybody goes through them in the same order. Right. Most of the time, you will experience most of them. Unfortunately, just because you've been through one doesn't mean that you're done going through it. Yeah, right. uh, sometimes you'll go through and you'll think, hey, okay, I can check that box and I'm done with that one, only to find yourself back in that situation again because that wound is not completely drained and you still have some grief work to do. That's right. Yeah. And, and the, the Bible is a wonderful prescription. Uh, it seems simple enough. Oh, here, just read this and call me in the morning. Right. But there are a number of stories we can relate to. I think the individuals who go through various forms of how they grieve over what circumstances they were grieving over. And, and scripturally, we could see that, that there were times of deep loss Definitely. and sadness and they're, they weren't shy about it. I mean, certainly King David wrote very expressively as he sought the Lord. And, and you see that many of the Psalms even might start with a form of grief and sorrow, but it turns to great joy right. by the end of that Psalm. And so just even expressing it to God, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. But as you look to some of these characters, individuals of Scripture like Job or Naomi, Hannah and David, uh, just to name a few, they went through times of great sure sorrow. Do. But I think one of the the higher arching, one of the bigger arch questions in this is, does God grieve? Yeah. Uh, is, I mean, maybe we have this stoic impression of God, like he's uh, without emotion, um, he, he's above it all. Right. Isaiah 46.10, he saw the end from the beginning. Yep. He, he's not going to get caught he's up in emotion, lifted up. is he? Yeah. <laughs> So what are some of your yeah, thoughts to that question? that's so true. I mean, even in Hebrews, you know, we're, we're told that we have a, a high priest who can understand the things that we're, we're going through in regard to temptation. Hmm. But I think it's also important to realize that scripturally, God does grieve. We see in Genesis 6, 6 to 8, that God the Father is grieved because of the sinfulness of the human race. Right. So we see the Father grieving. And Isaiah 63, 10, Ephesians 4, 30, God the Holy Spirit is grieved, first because of the disobedience of Israel, but also because of the church. Hmm. And then, of course, we see Jesus, Isaiah 53, uh, Jesus, the man of sorrows, and Matthew 23, 37, 39, that Jesus is acquainted with grief. He understands. He went through grief. It's so clear when you read the Gospels. That's right. That Jesus grieved as well. And even, you know, for Lazarus. Uh, yeah, John, yeah. 11, John eleven thirty five. Yeah, I, I remember thinking how clever I was when I memorized that. And Luana, <laughs> I may have shared that on a previous radio broadcast, but it, it, you know, when they ask you to memorize a scripture, and you're like, oh, I got this one, John right. eleven thirty five, and then it's like two words, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus wept, <laughs> and then and then you fail to understand or grasp how magnificent that is that it he is. was fully in the moment and yet fully capable yeah. to bring new life into the situation. Yeah. Fully human and fully God. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and met them right where they were yeah. and always had a heart. He would grieve as he would look out to the crowd and see them without a shepherd right. or in their state of affairs of, of those who were broken and seemed to have no hope or right. loss of limbs. That's even. our God. And he brings new life into that situation fully with them yeah. and meeting them at their, their time of greatest need. And he certainly did that with us in our state of sin, Definitely. that he loved us first right. and willing to pay the ultimate price, give everything for right. us. Uh, there's a love there that uh, we haven't even fully captured or d d talked about as we talk about agape love. But we do know that Jesus mourned. And, and he, as you mentioned of Hebrews 4.15, that he is that sympathetic high priest. It says he sympathizes with our weaknesses. Right. And so I think that there's several, well, let me give at least three here of just steps in overcoming grief and having a right perspective on it. I would say number one is that we must recognize that grief is a natural response to pain That's and right. loss. There's nothing wrong nope. with grieving. It's healthy. In Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse eight, the Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days they grieved until the time of weeping and mourning was over. And some have asked me then, is that the norm? Was that sort of the normal, okay, you can only grieve for 30 days right. and now you've got to be over it. Actually, in Genesis 50 verse 10, if I recall, it was seven days. That was really the, the standard. And yet when Moses passed, it was 30. And yes, right. even when Aaron died, according to Numbers 20 verse 29, they mourned another 30 days for him as well. And in their customs, the, the Jewish mourning period traditionally they even had professional mourners right. that would come into the household and they would even play instruments or make meditations and prayers and chants and so forth and and several of their rules that they would put in place is they had have the talmud this collection of oral traditions even the poorest of the people there they would even have flute players that would come into their home and mourn with them and mourn with the women 
They would shave their heads. They would uh, put ashes or dust on their heads uh, in addition to rending their garments. And all of this communicated that they were in a state of mourning. And so we have to acknowledge the fact that grieving is something that we went through. The Bible acknowledges that grieving is part of a very real emotion. But as you alluded to, there are other things that can cause grieving aside from the loss of a loved one. I believe that it is healthy, even biblically, to grieve over sin. Yeah, oh, definitely. When we have fallen out of obedience with God, when we're experiencing the ramifications of bad choices, it shows that our repentance is legitimate, and that's the right. turning away from sin. But we have to grieve that we've broken God's heart. In Jeremiah twenty-five thirty-four, he says, Weep and wail, you shepherds, roll in the dust, you leaders of the flock. For your time to be slaughtered has come. Wow. Very serious there. Because sin and the fate of it brings what I believe is a healthy mourning, knowing that we have broken the heart of God. We need to have an alignment with him. And secondly, we know that times of grief serve a purpose. Ecclesiastes 7.2, it's a very interesting verse. It says here, it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For this is the end of all mankind, and the living will lay it to heart. Now, at initial glance there, that seems like a very uh, disheartening passage, but this verse implies that, that grief can be good because it can refresh our perspective of life, that in this flesh, we are going to go through sorrows. We'll, we'll go through the difficulties of life, and this is a very finite existence, as you talked about. It's supposed to be a period of almost like boot camp for right. the Christian right. who's going to be with a thousand years with the Lord Jesus during the millennial reign yeah. as a royal priesthood in service to him. We're, we're preparing for that. And then for the new kingdom that comes in a new heaven and a new earth that follows. Right. So we have to keep this finite perspective of this. Stop laying up treasures that are <laughs> going right. to road here. <laughs> keep your perspective that there is something better that lies ahead. Yeah. And then thirdly, I think we have to remember that feelings of grief are temporary. Right. We got to remember these, these things can heal if biblically mended. If, if we go to the prescription of God's holy word and prayer, we'll talk about that as we can in our short time together, but we have to remember it is temporary. And in fact, as Psalm 30 verse five says, weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Yep. And this is from someone who knew the Lord. There is hope on the other end of it. There is light on the other end of the tunnel in those periods of grieving. And, That's right. and Dr. Ford, I know personally you have gone through some of those dark moments of loss, personal loss. Yeah. And you've talked about different ways we can mourn over different circumstances, but for you, it was very personal loss of a spouse. It was. Yep. And, and, and how did you cope with that? I mean, what, how did, uh, there, there must've been a formula perhaps, or some <laughs> things that God revealed in his word that perhaps right. you can share with our listener today that may give encouragement to somebody who has gone through something like that. Yeah. Back in uh, 2012, my wife of almost 20 years uh, died in her sleep from uh, hemorrhage in her brain, a stroke. Wow. And uh, so she was there one day and she was gone the next day. And we had to figure out how to move on from there. And as Socrates had said, the unexamined life is not worth living. Mm -hmm. And there were some life lessons during that time. But in retrospect, I could see how the Lord had been preparing me for the prior decade as I had been continuing to grow closer and closer to him. And what it allowed me to do was to press into him instead of run away. Mm. And even just the, the simple verse, maybe at the end of Matthew, Jesus has, I will be with you always unto the end of the age, mm. just really had a huge impact on me, just realizing that Jesus was going to be there. And not that some days weren't awful. And there was times, there were times where I didn't realize you could hurt that badly. I didn't realize that there was that, that that type of pain even existed until this happened. This is uh, eye-opening, and there are certain things in life that you just can't really understand until you experience it yourself. And that's why we have to you know, respect people when they're grieving, when they're going through things, that it is an individual journey. Mm -hmm. uh, even though there are some commonalities, we all have these individual journeys of grief that we take. But like you said, what, what happens is, as a Christian, is if you will let it, it will draw you closer to the Lord. And so I'd said in the prior show, and that's where I was drawing it from, the, the poem Footprints in the Sand, there's really nothing like being carried by Jesus until you've actually been carried by Jesus mm -hmm. through those times of life. But the, it's those times of life that draw us close to him. And things are going great and we're happy and everything's breaking our way. We don't feel like we need a God. 
But it's those times of sorrow when we've brought, been brought to the end of ourselves that we draw close to the Lord. I mean, they are a blessing in that sense of, you you know, you never feel God closer than um, when you're going through something like that. And you know, even C.S. Lewis had said that, that God, you know, whispers to us in our, in our pleasure, um, but, you know, yells to us in our pain. So we really, we really hear him, we really feel him, we feel his love and his presence many times the most when we're going through those times of hardship. Yeah, and, and I think that, is, you know, as we look at ways then to express and overcome that grief is you had to turn to Scripture to find solace there right. and to draw closer to the Lord. We can either retreat right. and blame God, and I've right. certainly experienced that with individuals who were angry with God. Yeah. And as you talked about the five ways that we grieve, we want to turn that that, that hurt towards others. And sometimes the people we love the most around us in our sphere of influence are the recipient of that. That's right. And they struggle with how to process that when they're being sort of lashed out at. Right. And and God is one of the ones who tends to receive that as well from us. We're angry. We don't want to talk to him. We don't want to go to church anymore. Right. Others may press in and, and sometimes those emotions go through ebbs and flows as well. And maybe we do tend to pull away from our close communion with God. And well, what's the point of praying if he's just going to hurt me anyway? Right. Uh, You know, and forgive me for even saying that, but I think that as we voice our real emotion in this, we have a healthy guide through scripture to how to navigate some of these things. And I think it's an important part of overcoming grief then is to express it to God. Number one, express it, be real with him. And, And we talked about that with the psalmist that he would start with expressing his sorrow, but then it would turn to the hope, just even letting the Lord hear it. Like, Lord, I don't even know what to say right now. And Romans 8 is great for that. When we don't even know how to pray, we know the Holy Spirit will translate on our behalf and take it before the Father where Jesus is at his right hand interceding for us because God understands us according to Psalm 139 verse 2. I think another important step is to share it with others. And we are instructed in Romans 12, 15 to mourn With those who mourn, it's not a suggestion. It's a requirement that truly the body of Christ is to be that because Christ always had his arms out. He was always embracing those who were broken in heart. And so likewise, we should not be taking it as an inconvenience, but as an opportunity and a privilege to be Christ's arms to someone else in their time of great sorrow. He does care for us. I think we need to really stress that, that we can be angry with God, but we have to understand he loves us more than we can ever imagine. And 1 Peter 5, 7 reminds us that he cares for us greatly. And we know that he he's with us even when we can't put to words our frustration about the circumstances. And so as we express these things to God, as we express these things to others, especially in the body of Christ, I think the big challenge here then is we need to surround ourselves with people who we know are going to even be a good listener at times. Right. Um, Job certainly was seeking advice from others, spouse and friends. He didn't always receive the best of advice. So if maybe you're a listener right now who's been called to come alongside somebody else who's going through a grieving process and you really don't know how to be there for them, again, turn to scripture, turn to prayer, seek the Lord in this and how you can minister to them in their time of need. Maybe it is something that seems to be difficult for you to understand or to to navigate through because maybe it is a loss of a pet right. or a job or some creature comfort, something they're familiar with. We can lose a possession that had a deep, significant value to sure. us, maybe an heirloom from right. a family right. member. Sentimental value. Yeah. And, and, and years have gone by and you just can't find it and it's leaving a hole and maybe it seems like an unhealthy attachment and, and rather than judging what we need to do is be that listening ear, praying for them, interceding for them, like we see in Exodus 17, of Aaron and her to the right and left of Moses while he's carrying the burden of prayer for Israel, just even being there to be a good listener, Yes, who's someone who has a heart for the Lord and is there to patiently endure with them. Yep. What a ministry that is. We've just gotten started on this, Dr. Ford. <laughs> I think we're going to have to come back to this next yeah, week this really and good. keep talking about this vital subject. But if you've been encouraged as a listener today and just thinking, yes, finally somebody gets me, somebody understands that I am going through something I can't even verbally express, it's hurting my marriage, it's hurting my work, I'm feeling depressed, there's this wound I just can't seem to identify, we're here to help you. And and we're wanting to take your not only your emails, but if you want to reach out to us even via phone, 
you can do so. Let me give you a web address. It's calvaryfountain.com. Calvaryfountain.com. Our email address, our phone number is there. We love to hear from you, minister to you, and we'll be addressing this topic again even next week. We hope this has been a blessing to you. If you love to just come and worship and just be around other people who understand also what you may be going through, our services are on Sunday at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Again, you can learn more at calvaryfountain.com. God bless you, my friends. We'll see you next week.